Before cleaning the burette, we must know its parts. First, on the bottom is the tip, which is a narrow passage for the liquid to flow out. Then, this is the stopcock, which carefully regulates the flow of the liquid from inside to outside of the burette. Here, you can see a knob that seals the liquid from flowing out. Next, as you can see above the stopcock is the barrel, which is marked with accurate graduations, which are in milliliters. Furthermore, we will be showing you our whole burette setup. As you can see here, this is the original burette setup when we are in laboratories. However, we had to make use of alternatives for the materials that we lack. Instead of a burette stand, we made use of a metal pole that is similar in height to burette stands. For the base, we used a weighted plastic container so that the whole setup will not tip over. These are the things to remember when setting up a burette. First, we have to secure the stand and the base on a flat and sturdy surface. Second, the burette must be put in the upright position of the burette clamp. Third, when reading a burette, it is important that your line of sight be in a perpendicular direction to the burette column. Lastly, make sure that it is tightly fitted to avoid slipping and breakage of the burette itself. Before conducting the experiment, we must first clean and then rinse the burette. To clean, we'll put a few milliliters of the ionized water into the burette, making sure that the stopcock is closed. Then turn the burette into an almost horizontal position. The water should then slowly flow towards the top of the barrel. Holding in this position, rotate the burette which will efficiently coat the insides with the ionized water. After 5 to 10 seconds of doing this, we'll let the rinsing water drain into our waste container and then repeat this process with small volumes of the ionized water. Next, use the solution for rinsing identical to the cleaning process. Hello, so in this part, we will weigh the support 50 ml flat bottom flask. However, because of our inability to go to the campus, we thought of using regular glasses instead of the flat bottom flask. Now, we will weigh the glass up to the nearest 0.01 grams using the analytical balance. Note that the container must be clean and dry from the outside but need not to be dry inside. However, due to the unavailability of the analytical balance, we opted to use the industrial top balance and can only record masses up until 0.1 grams. After knowing the weight of the receiving flask, we will then fill the burette with distilled water up to zero mark. Note that we should always remove any hanging drop from the tip of the burette. We will leave it for one minute until the burette reaches constant level. After the water in the burette has reached a constant level, Read the position of the meniscus as accurately as possible. Place the flask under the burette and draw into it about 5 ml of water, removing any drop on the tip by touching it against the inside neck of the flask. Do not attempt to stop exactly at the 5 ml mark, but do not vary more than 0.1 ml from it. Note the time and the expiration of half minute. Read the burette accurately and record the reading. Weigh the flask and the water and record. Without emptying the flask, draw into it the water from the burette from the 5 ml position to about the 10 ml mark. Continue in this way with 5 ml increments throughout the length of the burette. When this is completed, refill the burette and repeat the calibration. Record all of your data and weigh again and at the expiration of half the minute, take the reading and record.
using the burette, we have to fill it with distilled water and let it drain.